Hello. Hello. Welcome to the September 8th, 2021 meeting of the DEI working group. Um, these are, I just copied some items into the notes from last week that give us, um, I don't I think this would be the stuff that we might want to discuss this week because I think we spent most of last meeting on the um, metrics release. Does everybody remember that the same as I do? Yes. Yep. All right, so big questions. How do we envision the working group? Obviously metrics, but what is our role on continually reflecting on DEI within the chaos project and what is our level of involvement beyond just the working group? And I think these are some suggestions that were made last last time or as part of the agenda and maybe that we could start talking about that these questions you know if we have a role beyond developing metrics and what that role might be kind of talked about this last week and yeah. elizabeth brought up a good point that we don't ask the other working groups mm -hmm. to necessarily do like a risk assessment okay of chaos and we don't ask um you know, we don't ask whatever you get the point. And yeah, so yeah. um but maybe it's inappropriate. That might be a heavy word, but like inappropriate for the DEI working group to also take on this reflection. And so so probably not. Did I get that right, Elizabeth? Yeah, I mean if you know if the group doesn't think it would be that big of a you know a heavy lift, um then that's one thing but it just seems like i don't know it just seems like it's asking a lot and and you know maybe the group's okay with that maybe that's what they want to do and if that's the case then that's also fine but i just want us to be mindful of that and you know because a lot of the issues that come up are not going to be easy problems to solve right and so it's not like you know i mean it's a lot so i don't know i agree i'm eating a carrot but um, and actually to that point, it's that last point's well taken to like, if we even attempted to do that and it was only once a month, like we might be like, Hey, that's a heavy issue. Talk to you in four weeks <laughs> and we'll, yeah. we'll slowly solve this concern over the course of a year and probably doesn't work real well. So then maybe the other, like the question would be then like, do we want to make a recommendation that there's a formal like DEI council within chaos that and like we just we out of this working group are like that's not us by the way it could be members of this community that's fine but because we can get that on the um uh board meeting because I think that would probably need board approval, like if we made like a council. So we yeah. could put that on the meeting, at least kind of elevate it there and get feedback. What do you think of that? I think yeah. that's an excellent idea. Yeah, okay. I think so too. I'd like to also hear, um, not to put y'all on the spot, but Lauren or Kafaya, do you have thoughts on this? I don't want to speak for everybody here, but. Just curious. Um, I don't have anything probably different than what's already been said. Um, I would tend to agree. Um, yep, that's all I got. Same, same <laughs> here. I don't have any opposing thoughts. Cool. OK. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is whether we want to change our meeting from weekly to two to three times a month. I think all this becomes moot down below. Yeah. So we don't want to, we still want to meet weekly just doing the yeah. metrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, 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 all right. So I'm just going to delete this because otherwise I'll look back at these notes and find it. Oh, okay. There we go. That's fine notes and decisions. 
So um, I have one question. Um, yeah. And it's coming from a newbie. Uh, still trying to kind of navigate my way around how chaos works. But how would, do we envision, like there's the reflection team and then we're talking about a DEI council. Like what would be different between those two? Like what are their responsibilities and that we envision? I think they kind of end up being the same. Okay. Okay, cool. So we have the reflection team right now that is meeting Mondays. And then to me, that team will kind of end at some point just because it's it's current it's a funded project from the Ford Foundation to do the reflection. And then I think the council, and we could just call it reflection team. That sounds a little bit nicer than council. <laughs> Yeah, council so. sounds like council of elders or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that if those two terms kind of were synonymous, that I was modeling that mentally the same way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think actually, let's just keep it reflection team. I think that's way better than council. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. Call me DEI reflection team. Yeah. Where are the, uh, in Google Docs, where are the emojis? Are they in special characters? Yes. Unless you have uh, hard coded a keyboard shortcut as some of us have. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> mine- Emojis a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> mine does not work in Google Docs. I have to go to the, the Omni bar on Chrome and then type in my emoji and then copy and paste it into Docs. But that's that might just be Windows struggles. I wanted to add the carrot emoji to my carrots, and I did. I do have a topic uh, other than the carousel. <laughs> uh, other than the carousel, I'd like to talk about um, again about the DEI working groups like role in onboarding in the chaos community. Where do we stand with this? How do we want to um, be part of this, or do we want to be part of this? I, mean, I think, speaking for myself, onboarding is certainly, if we do it well, it, we will retain new contributors in general to a greater degree. But that doesn't solve the problem of attracting more diverse contributors. And so that might be the place where DEI could be additive um, in terms of conceiving ways of uh, identifying and recruiting people from more diverse origins. Yeah, um, that, the reason I brought it up to DEI was because it, it's part of the inclusion aspect of it. It can be part of the equity aspect of it, no matter, no matter how, how you handle your onboarding. And I think um, as I've seen it, it was my minimal experience in the field so far, but like, as I've seen it, the more welcoming you are, the more diverse group, it just kind of happens. Uh, it, it happens that um, you, welcome, you you start bringing in people that wouldn't feel welcome in other places. So Matt, could you, I, th I think we would all agree with that, like being more welcoming is a good thing. So do you have thoughts on like how this working group could could help in that regard? Is it about um, like, creating more artifacts that help specify that like new metrics or like we have these metrics models, you know what I mean? Or is it actually doing things within the chaos project that assist with onboarding? See what I'm saying? Yeah, I was kind of thinking more the latter because the human element of, um, of like communication and connection is what makes that inclusion happen. Um, just from the, from the perspective of someone who, um, like you, you find yourself in the chaos project, it can be easy to find yourself in a spot where you don't know where to go. And I'm trying to, um, I, I'd like to have some kind of forcing function or some kind of, um, some kind of, you know, rare meeting if, if, if need be, but to, um, to get this onboarding sorted out. 
this issue, these issues with onboarding. What are other people's thoughts about this? I like it. I have no problem with it. I feel like it's a little bit more of a digestible chunk for us to tackle than like all of the other things that we listed above, implementation, ethics guidelines, all that stuff. Like onboarding seems like it's directly, you know, something that we could help with. Um, I guess maybe we could start with like, what are the problems to be solved? Um, Cause I know we've, you know, we've made some efforts um, to improve it, but I think to Matt Cantu's point, we don't like, there isn't really a plan in place. There isn't really like, this isn't really written down. I don't think anywhere like a documented list of like, here's the problems that people are having and here's what we're going to do about it. Um, it's just kind of been a little bit more organic. I think than that, you know, as, as ideas come up, we just, kind of implement them, but it would be good to see, you know, more of a plan, I think, in place. So, yeah, yeah. there's one last thing is that what's organic for, for a lot of people can be not organic for others. And uh, that's um, what I'm trying to work on. I, I will identify some issues and come back next week. I'll take an action item for that. And then um, I'm not going to try to just point out what's wrong, but I'd like to try and figure out some solutions as well um, before next week. So, you know, I think, um... So I like this a lot. And I think as we have the DEI reflection team that's providing, the DEI reflection team does not do implementation. They are about providing suggestions and ways to, to think about the project. Um, so you can probably see where I'm going with this. At some point, the implementation has to land somewhere in the project. And you know, if you take a look at the landscape within the chaos project, there are certain areas where those recommendations just won't land. You know what I mean? They just, they're not gonna land in the risk working group likely, or they're not gonna land. They, some of them are kind of community-based, but generally speaking, they have to land somewhere. And so I'm, I'm, and there are, I think certain working groups that are uh, just kind of set up around defining artifacts like the metrics model working group, for example, defining models of collections of metrics that might be useful for other people. Um, but the DEI working group does seem to be in a slightly different position, a more unique position to have maybe not the to the full extent that we were talking about before, like we do everything all the time, but some, some location for, doing this type of work. So I'm I'm okay with the DEI. What I'm trying to say is I'm okay with the DEI working group um, taking on a slightly different persona or a slightly different you know approach than some of the other working groups that yes we do create artifacts like that help inform the for example Matt the badging program. You know what I mean? Like that's okay. We do that and and we actually have a program. We're actually the only working group that does have a program. <laughs> to be honest with you, the badging program, which is helping others uh, through their DEI. So maybe this one is kind of, we could think of it just like a badging program, but like internally, you know what I mean? Like we're thinking about how we can not only help people externally, but help ourselves internally. Uh, and I don't know, that was kind of a long, long statement, but that's where I'm at. So Matt, I would recommend, you know, I, I think the, the, best approach maybe, and I think Elizabeth alluded to this, would be um, the, the philosophy we have in the chaos project with respect to creating artifacts and software is generally, you know, move people off zero. Like there's no, no bearing on community health. So here are like a few things that can help you improve. This doesn't solve everything for you, but it, it slowly moves you forward in the right direction. Maybe we could think that way as well, Matt. Like those recommendations, they may look small, um, but they're actually quite impactful. And then over time, all of those small things slowly accumulate to larger things. And before you know it, you're doing pretty cool things. Yeah, that's how, I'm, that's how badging worked. That's how uh, I think I want to um, move forward with the onboarding stuff so far. I guess I'll, I'll be back next week with more information on this. Stay tuned. Okay, that sounds great. Um, and Matt, let me know too, I'm going to, I'll put something out there too, just 
through our current funding here at the university. I mean, if you think there are things you need, kind of think that way as well. You know what I mean? Like financial support that yeah, could sounds good. that could do this as well. So try not to let money be the issue. <laughs> Unless it's like a million dollars, then then make money the issue. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, Sean, I'm done. Back to you. All right. So um, the next item on the agenda is badging stickers. And uh, I'll turn again to Matt Cantu, or maybe Matt, it says Matt Cantu here. So I'll turn to Matt Cantu. I'm back already. <laughs> on, um, on the spot. Yeah, I guess uh, that's okay. I, so we have a form to um, fill out to do stickers. We had a lot of requests already, more than I expected at least. And uh, I'm really happy to see um, so many people have applied for a sticker. And, um, How many and people I have filled out a sticker request. Am I supposed to tell you? Isn't it like a like an IRB thing or something? <laughs> I don't think that's an IRB thing. <laughs> we had we had eight, which is more than the uh, more than awesome. like the a lot more than the average attendance of the meeting. On your so sharing really your, cool. I know. Your, I mean, your <laughs> Somebody wants to like go through YouTube videos and um, I was just showing the form in demonstration mode. If somebody wants to go through YouTube videos and get my address, I guess. And come to your house in Columbia, yeah, Missouri yeah. for whatever odd reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, go for it. <laughs> the first round of stickers for anybody who did um, ask for one is going out um, most likely today because it's all written out. Just have to figure out. We have a lot of international postage we've got to figure out. So I got to figure that out and then we'll be sending them out. Okay, cool. That is the end of the stated agenda. Are there other things that people want to talk about? Should we look at our issues as it relates to the release and see if we have any comments yet? Yeah, we could. Yeah, I think it's been a while since we looked at the like PRs and issues. Yeah. We do have those um, those those action items from last week from the week before about okay. the, um, the metrics that we need to put checklists on or all, the, all those done. Um, I took care of the documentation, discoverability and inclusive experience at event ones. We were missing a couple of things that need to be fixed. Let's see, um, I guess yeah. there's there's a number that don't have things checked off yet. By the way, I would like to make a comment now that you're looking at this, mm -hmm. the psychological safety metric, this in particular. So this okay. came up in the Asia Pacific call that this was yep. an absolutely wonderful metric. Yeah. So it was in the, yes, exactly. I, <laughs> it was during the translation process because obviously the metrics have to be read, right? And understood. Um, and the comment was, it was just a wonderful metric and there was a lot learned during the translation process. So good job. I uh, can actually check, you can just check all these okay. because I think they've all been I've been on calls with Kevin where he can just check the box without editing the markdown, but I don't, I don't know how they, I don't know how to do that. Is there a trick to that? I think you have to be an editor. What you're a, you're like I a should board, be, yeah. Board owner. It's been magically checked. I can check if you need me to on this one. Yeah, so I mean, if I can go through and edit the markdown, but if you have the ability to check the boxes, that's. That's faster. That is kind of weird because I guarantee you are a chaos org owner. Yeah, I know, I know I am, but I, for whatever reason, don't have the rights to check the box. You have to triple click it. Oh, you do? Oh, maybe that's... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you need admin access to check on other people's comments. Um, so there's a DI working group group that does admin on this uh, okay. inventory. So I, uh, I can add you to it if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just if you want me to check things off while I'm sharing my screen. Or we can, I can refresh and see someone else. It doesn't. Do we want to check? I can if check them for now. Yeah. Okay. If, yeah, I want you to check them for now. So I'm just scroll down. I don't. Kevin made this comment, but I think. That's just letting us he, know it is on the website. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I think that one is Elizabeth's. 
under ex inclusive experience. Not, not to hold you accountable, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was totally accountable and I did not do it. So okay. yeah, it's totally right. fine. Do we want I to bet. look at each of these individually? At a high quick? level, yeah. Okay, if you're formatting issues, please fix the release disclaimer. Looks like we did all that. Speaker demographics. I mean, we put all these in the newsletter a couple of times um, yeah. and we tweeted about it. So does that, would that count as the promotion? Cause I think that I was- I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one is Matt G. Time inclusion. Yeah, and that's pretty much done. I actually don't know if we um, updated what are you on right now, Sean? Uh, this is the inclusion oh. for virtual events. I was doing the oh, that... demographics one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these either are done. And I was just looking to see if anybody had commented during the review period, had we had anything to respond to, but I'm not seeing anything yet. Are there this, metrics beyond these four? There's a so. fifth. Um, Is there? not covered inclusive experience at event and event demographics documentation discoverability uh, which is farther down so that's why oh, okay it's been a while and that was um mine i, I identified like one issue i think we didn't have contributors or something um Let's see first comment yeah the, I, I put them under the check boxes okay yeah, there's no contributor list on this one, which is not a good deal. <laughs> okay, so... And I had to change the file name, which I'm reaching out to Kevin about. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. All right. So do we want to... Uh, do we know who contributed to it? Is that something you can edit? Or is this one from so long ago that we simply don't know? Uh, it was part of a doc that was the three of the, those three metrics for documentation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who did what and who did what. Otherwise, I'd be able to trace down the doc. I mean, I think if we just if we don't know, we don't know. This is a re recent development, and this issue was first opened over a year ago. And we might, we might just not have a yeah easy, just easily accessible it. record of contributors. Yeah. So I would just leave it blank. Would be my suggestion. I'm okay with that too. Uh, looking at pull requests. Looks like there's a couple of approved pull requests from many months ago. I don't know if these are things that we want to merge. This changes. I like that one. Event code of conduct, event demographics. I'll put this in the um, chat as well so that anybody who wants to scan it on their own, I realize it's not super efficient to look at these. I think this is where we switched it to just attendees from attendees and speakers. At least this one that I'm highlighting down here at the bottom. Does anyone else recall that decision? Yeah, I, I think uh, I can take an action item to follow up on this one. Okay. Yeah, because it seems but, like we were moving towards putting them together, not breaking them out. 100%, yes. Because we had, yes, we're merging them, which is just called event demographics. And it looks like some of these changes are to split them apart again. This is to code of conduct, as I saw. But if you look down lower, Okay. Like where it says data collection strategies, it says just like survey attendees or survey just speakers or something like that. Yeah. So, so you might have a little bit of like some of them, like not accept everything. Okay. Yep. Uh, and if um, changes, you can either request changes from the original pull request or. Yeah. Um, what I do sometimes is I, oops, I edit. 
Oh, I know what the problem is. I'm I'm logged in as the wrong person. We saw Sean's secret account. Yeah, that's that's what was going on there. I didn't see a secret account. I want to see a secret account. I was looking at something else. I would. It's not a secret account. It's just a a different account. But in cases like this, Matt, um, what what I've done before is I can, you can edit this and you, you can create a new branch off of the main branch and merge it into that and then make the edits you want to make and do another pull request. Okay. That Sounds I've, that I've found that. is the easiest way of editing someone else's pull request without going through the long cycles of uh, asking them to make changes. And sometimes people will make them and sometimes they don't. We might, this working group might consider changing the name of its main branch. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I, I realized after a while with uh, some changes to badging that if you change the name of a repository, it will can, it can still redirect if you take it the old URL to the new one. Yeah, um, it just to, turn it right into now, a redirect. It's diversity and inclusion in the name of the repo. But it should be diversity, equity, and inclusion. We could just do DEI. Yeah, DEI. Sure. Yeah, so who wants to? I, I know how to change the master branch to main. So um, yeah. you do it. Okay. All right. Um, are there, and I don't think that on this repo there will be any actions that require addressing. Like there's probably no, no automation testing, no automation. So um and it doesn't generate a read the docs document anywhere so so actually yeah. on that note then could um so sean if you could do that here yeah could you if we're going to be proactive and welcoming could you and you know how to do it yep could you attend other working groups and offer to do the same there yeah well. yeah i can i can rotate through the working groups i think I, I had some conflicts early in my semester but i think i can get to each working group at their next meeting and okay. bring this up and take care of it with yeah their, that would be really helpful thank you their permission so what do you want to change the name of the working group to mm -hmm. and recognizing that if we change it there are some dependencies in places that we have on the website that we may have to notify Kevin about. Although you're right, Matt, it does automatically redirect for a time after you change the name. That was your earlier point, right? That was, yeah, Matt's point. Can't do. Right. Yeah. Yep. So what do, what do we want it to call? Be called diversity, equity, inclusion, or do we want something shorter like DEI? Yes. DEI? Yeah. You might want to do all caps because that's how people know it. Oh, that works. That, that's not what, yeah. I mean, the, the our way of naming repos here has been all oh, over case. Got so, it. Like okay, it's the style of this organization. Um, that works for me. I don't know if you need me to. I mean, I can change the branch while we're sitting here. If see if there's anything else that we want to talk about. Actually, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Just so. That's it. Um, I think it used that, to be a lot harder, right? That well, okay. So that's it. As long as you have no automation, that works. <laughs> um, if you have automation, you need to create a new branch, leave the master branch in place so it doesn't break all of your automation, and then pick through all of the problems that changing yeah. the primary branch creates. Yeah. In this case, since there's no automation, it is that easy. Um, but for something like Augur, it was not that easy. And would this this won't affect the continuous metrics release, will it? It shouldn't, because the continuous metrics release is just pointing at a repo. The, a repo, and it's going to use yeah. the main branch, whatever the default branch is by default. Um, okay. And so, you, to to get the default branch, you don't have to specify a branch, and I wouldn't expect that we do. Okay. Um, well, we will but, find out shortly. Yeah, I say maybe, <laughs> maybe one, maybe a way to approach this is to okay, we've done it for DEI. I'll let Kevin know that I changed it for DEI, and yeah, ask him if he can just look. You know, let me know if I've caused any problems. 
before I do a rotation among all of the working yes. groups. <laughs> Let's make sure. Yes. And then if that works, then we can go repo by repo or working group by working group after yeah. the release. It might be worth or mentioning making if you sure. go to, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, just making sure with Kevin, it shouldn't cause any problems, but having him confirm that before I rotate among the groups is probably a good idea. So if you go to work group diversity and inclusion, it will go to the work group DEI now if you take that URL. Yep. Also, if you ping it, it will ping correctly, which is strange. Or not yeah. ping, but test it. Yeah, no, um, GitHub does a good job. It doesn't stay in place forever, but it does stay in place for more than a year. And I think slightly more than two years based on my experience. There is a point in time where that redirect will go away, but it's a very long period of time, basically after which all people using the repo will have the right URL anyway. Hey, Sean. Yeah. Um, sorry to divert the conversation just for a second. Will you sure. click on that goals? To, I'll go back to that repo. Will okay. you click on that goals 2019? I'm just super curious what that says. <laughs> like, did oh. we do them? Are we... I don't know. That's a good uh, like make because I think that was put on our agenda on. was to like figure out right was that on, that was on their part somewhere mm -hmm. it, figure out what we want to do for you know it was and I I thought the discussion was well I guess we did kind of skip past that and and got stuck in the we talked mostly about not adding to our workload for this and we don't order. we don't have to do this right now i was just really curious what what that looked like so we can yeah. just worth mentioning our goals were use or objectives were use cases project partners chaos mission ethical guidelines and metric workflow so we've been doing a lot of that this year maybe we could do a quick pr to update that to goals 2021 2022 <laughs> Um, well, do we want to, I mean, we can change the name of it rather easily. It, um, we need to make a new one if we're going to make one though. All right. Um, and I would say that we probably don't, I mean, do we want to just, do we want to take that on? Do we want to? We could put that on the agenda for next week, maybe. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I, um, Update this for and I'll make that. I'll just go ahead. We need a facilitator for next time as well. I should be able to do it. Okay. Unless anybody else wants to do it otherwise, um, that's totally okay too. Sorry, I jumped on that. I haven't done it in a while. I'm, I'm okay with you jumping on it. Oops. So I'll just move this up here for our next agenda. Let's say review metrics release for issue comments. Probably is another good agenda item for next time. All right. Anything else that we want to discuss? Well, the naming was big for me. Um, I have a question for Matt Cantu about the reviewer applications from yeah. us. So yeah. um, I did fill out the application, but didn't hear back. Is that a you get picked or you don't get picked kind of scenario or? What's oh, I just topic? haven't responded on it yet. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, our, our focus of our last outreach meeting was kind of meet and greet, and we were going to be focusing on um, kind of reviewer outreach on... Uh, basically, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, I, did, I just didn't hear anything. Yeah, I'm going to... I'll go ahead and right after this meeting, I'll, I'll get to that for you. Cool. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's fine. Thank you. So if any other things that folks want to talk about this week? 
I can give you back 14 minutes of your time. Amy Austin was fun. I was super busy. I know. I would have given you like at the least hints and stuff. We ended up cleaning up the house basically. They're downstairs working on the floors, which is why I'm out here. Nice. I was busier than I thought I was going to be, just in terms of parent things. So. Did they show you the city take you to restaurants? Yeah, I saw a lot of the pool. <laughs> Many hours in a pool. Look! Look at how awesome our pool is. It is pretty awesome, actually. I know the UF pool. They had like indoors, outdoors. Their pools and their gyms and everything for the swimmers was really nice. Well, they were they dedicated a new outdoor pool while we were there, so it's a nice. Oh wow, that was a that's a good trip. They did a nice job there. Yeah, it was nice. And they unveiled their banner, so their championship banner from last year. There's a lot going on. So is UT on the list? Oh yeah. We should stop recording. Yeah. <laughs>